In this video, I'll show you how to assemble the MA36 and the AS36 silage beds. You'll notice these have detailed floors for the chain that might move the products inside of it out, and then it comes wired up with silage racks, and then an end gate is also enclosed. The process will be the same for either choice. First thing to do will be to cut the wires away that hold the silage racks to the bed. Second, we'll remove the end gate from the silage racks. Next, you can take a sharp knife and clean off any of the leftover wire on the top of the bed. Do the same for the end gate. Once the parts are separated, we're ready to prep for paint. Preparation is fairly simple. Use rubbing alcohol on a rag to wipe off any impurities on the parts. Once the rubbing alcohol is wiped away and is evaporated off, you're ready for prime and paint. Priming and painting the silage racks will take place in another step. When the paint is dry, we're ready for assembly. Detail can be added as you wish. The running gear, the landing gear, mud flaps, and all can be painted the colors of your choice. Simply slide the axles into the axle holes and press the wheels together. The end gate slides into these slots in the rear. If you want it to function, we'll add a pin in the holes that are on either side of the trailer. You may need to remount the holes to make sure that the rod will fit through. For this example, I'm using a 1 16th inch bit to remount the holes. A 16th inch plastic rod is used to hold the end gate in place. A small amount of glue is used to hold the rod on the inside in place. When the glue is dry, cut the excess away. Now your end gate should function. Now we're ready to put what looks like expanded metal on the silent tracks. Cut the rear part of the silage rack away. Note that there are wires that hold the silage rack to the bed. The lower part of the silage rack here is all wire. The top part, you can see, looks more like a ladder all the way around and then down the sides. Go ahead and leave the wires on for now. There is an optional hydraulic cylinder with ram that can be attached to the trailer as desired. While adding these details is an interesting idea, it really doesn't work very well. Inside your kit is bridle tool, which gives the appearance of expanded metal. At this moment, this is the easiest option to make what looks like expanded metal on your axe. Also, the most challenging part of the entire build. Cut a half inch or wider strip away from the bridle tool. Add a small amount of glue to the silage rack. And in this case, adhere to the rule that less is more. You wouldn't have to use super glue. Elmer's glue would work fine. You'll just have to let it dry longer.
A good tweezer and alligator clips are highly recommended for the rest of this project. Now you can see, it looks like we have expanded metal on our rack. For the longer set of racks, using one or more pieces seems to work pretty well. Again, we'll cut out pieces that are approximately a half inch or wider. Following our same idea from before, we'll go ahead and put just a little bit of glue on the inside of the racks. Now that we have one side done, I'm going to use some accelerant to cure the glue a little faster so we can do the other sides and keep moving along. For the front, we're going to use a piece that's slightly too wide or too long, and that's okay because we'll cut the excess off, but we do want to make sure we have enough overlap that, that we cover all the gaps at the front of the racks. Do make sure that any accelerant is off the rack so when you add your super glue, it does not cure the glue and then cause uneven surfaces.
If your bridle tool pushes into the creases at the front of the trailer well, you may not have to use alligator clips. Simply use accelerant and you should be fine. Once your bridle tool is covering the racks and you don't see any gaps, everything looks well, you can cut away all the excess bridle tool. Having a couple different sizes of scissors may be helpful to you as well. You'll notice we still haven't cut off the excess wires holding this rack together. We'll now go ahead and cut away part of it, but we do want to leave one piece of the silage rack wire on. That way we have a place to grab and hold so when we prepaint. Cut away the excess mesh from the bottom of the racks. If there's any excess wire stubs that might be left over, go ahead and cut those off with a knife. When you're satisfied that the bridle tool is cut away, as well as any leftover stubs from the wires, go ahead and wipe off your parts with the rag and rubbing alcohol. Now you're ready to prime and paint the color of your choice. Once your silage racks are painted, you can go ahead and cut off any remaining sprue. Come back with a sharp knife if necessary and remove any of the peg that might be there yet. And make sure that it's flush. Also, if you notice some of the bridle tool that's still hanging around, some little threads and pieces, you can go ahead and cut those away. If they're on the bottom side, they'll actually be on the inside of the trailer, won't be noticeable from the outside so much. So those aren't particularly necessary. But of course, on the top, if you see something that's hanging out that you don't like, you can go ahead and cut those away and clean them up. Now you can attach them to the trailer. You can go ahead and use a little bit of glue on the top side of the bed. It doesn't take a lot of glue and this is another case where less is more. You'll notice I'm not putting any of the glue around the end of the bed and that is to prevent any glue getting into the hinge points and then preventing the hinge from operating. And if you go ahead and tilt the bed up, this does actually aid in getting your Silatrex on the bed. So we're going to go ahead and push those to the front edge of the bed. And
press down gently. Sometimes these racks will go ahead and warp, so if that is the case and they've warped a little bit, you can actually use heat to warm up the rack and then make it uh, pliable and then press it into place once it cools. Or you can just incrementally go down the side of the bed, push it into place, and then use InstaSet to hold it where you want it. For the gate, you may need to warm up the plastic and spread the arms out just a little bit so they go on either side of the racks that are on the bed. I dry fit it first to make sure that everything is going to fit fine. And then on this one, all I do is add a little bit of super glue to the very back end. Again, this is to prevent any glue from getting in hinge points and then keeping the end gate from operating. Now, of course, to make this all simp, to make this process easier, you can actually fix the end gate closed so it doesn't operate, and then much of these troubles really become less of a concern because it won't function. You just glue in place and then off you go. Now, these will fit tight, and I found with the bridle tool that we've used, this creates the least amount of friction between the two end gates if you do choose to operate it. I have used wire mesh or even window screen in the past, and those just take up a lot of room and create a lot of friction, making it very difficult to open and close the gate. Thus, I end up breaking parts is what happens. At this point, our silage racks are on. We can go ahead and finish with a, some final detail in your kit. Each kit comes with DOT tape, which can be applied down the side. If you happen to get it where you don't like it, simply peel it up gently and then you can reposition the DOT tape as you wish. You can discard the excess or use it to put added detail on the end gate. 